Welcome back to another My Lure Box video. In today's video, we're going jack fishing with surface lures, and I'm gonna take you through how I like to fish a prop bait. This is a skitter prop by Rapala, and I haven't fished this before on this channel, but uh, I've been in love with them ever since I was a kid. These little skitter props and skitter props, they have a lot to offer. Uh, balsa made timber lures, they're just beautiful to fish with. So I'm gonna go through that this morning. We're just coming in to a beautiful little creek. Um, way up the back of a lake and uh, geez I've had a good time getting here this morning it's uh, dead low tide and I've just uh, I've just missed the sunrise now with the camera but I was out here right when you want to be for a surface session but uh, the tide caught me out in the middle of a lake so I've had my pants off this morning and I've been wandering across a lake a mud lake with um, with the stingrays, lots of fun at first light after a, uh, a slow wake up after an interesting night with the kids. But nevertheless, we're here, I'm excited, and the clouds just come over to drop the light conditions back to where it should be for a surface session. So let's get into it. Right, what I like to do with these sessions is take you through how I like to fish it, um, the kinds of retrieves that you can get with these lures, and then also just some of the things to look for when you're fishing one of these creeks, especially at this time of morning. So uh, I'm going to take you through that over the next sort of 10 or so minutes, and hopefully we can get a bite from a jack. Um, but at the very least, hopefully I can give you some things to think about for the next time you're out here chasing mangrove jack. I like to just try and keep the camera rolling and I'll just sort of show you as I'm going uh, the way that I'm fishing this and how I'm changing things up. So the first thing in a morning session like this when you've got a dead low tide or the, the very last of the run out is a lot of, you'll see a lot of this bank structure and the cover that they get at high tide or even mid tide is completely out of the water now. And so the jacks tend to retreat back into little holes and pockets off the edge of the banks if there's a, you know, like a drop off on the edge of a bank or if there's any lone structures that still are protruding out into the creek, that's where they tend to team up and hold around those. And they can get really aggressive at that to try and keep their little spot. So if you're throwing a lure in to stir them up, um, you can get onto some great action. But this is the kind of thing that I'm looking for. No, there's not a lot of cover out off this bank now at this tide so something like this there might be some jacks hanging around maybe not even under it they might be just sitting off the shoulder of it um, waiting for that tide to turn so they can get back up in there and because of that lack of structure and the cover for them i tend to sort of just focus a little bit more on the isolated pockets of, of cover. So I'll spend a little bit longer at each snag when it's right at the bottom of the tide. Because they've got to be here, they've got to be on these sections or... The other one is, you know, if you can, if you see a, a structure that's sitting out, that's a gimme. Like that's generally where they're going to be holding is somewhere where it's still covered right the way through the tide. Um, where they can all go and sit there and wait until it gets back up into the mangroves and they can hunt the bait around the edges again. The way that I'm fishing this this morning, I'm trying to hunt in the shadows. So you've got that early morning light, you've got the shadows cast over, this side's bare and lit by the sun now but this side's still got plenty of plenty of shade. And jacks just tend to be more aggressive once they're in that that darker area of the creek. Even that little bit of um, lay down there that's sort of just entering the edge, the jacks can be sitting almost like completely covered. You can't see them, but they're there. Um, 
and it might only come out another foot onto the edge but they'll still just be sitting in there and they almost appear the same colour as the mud like you can't see them even with your sunnies you can't see them um, in this discoloured water so you don't want to discard any little lay down or any little twig that's left in the water at low tide. This is a prime sort of spot. There's, there's a shadow line along the edge here. It's a great spot when you're fishing bridges to hit shadow lines. But this is also like a little pressure point. There's some cover on this. The water's hitting it and having to split. Could happen here, I reckon. Just a little bit later in the morning, the water will light. But anyway. thing I love about this prop bait obviously have a look at the profile it's like a beautiful little potty mullet shape and then it's got a really big prop at the back for the size of the bait but that means that when you're sitting it there you can just turn it over really slowly and it'll just throw that flash out and that little bit of choppy vibration like plop, 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 as it just crawls past the structure and you want to keep it in there as long as you can the design on the front there, the way that the front of the, the head of the bait's been designed, means that it will dip under and come back up. So you get like a little bit of a, a diving pop out of it. And uh, the jacks just love any of that vibration, like high cadence vibration with stalls where it sits in there and just annoys them, like sits in their home. They can't resist it, so they just smash them. So, boy, these things get me excited. I've upgraded the trebles, these are just like 2 two X owners, the hooks that come standing on them are probably okay for a fish or two, um, but there's some big jacks in here, so I've just gone a little bit heavier, and I don't want to go too heavy with this because it'll pull it down, and um, you know, maybe, maybe even these hooks are just a little bit light on for what I'd like, but you want that balsa, that, that flotation of the lure to be one of its main characteristics on the retrieve. You want it to sit there and bobble up and down at rest um, when you're just letting it go slack line and the jacks love that as well. Baby Jack. Two hits. Three hits. He's just coming up and nipping on it. Come on, buddy. So cool. Ooh, there's one. get a hold of it. I could hear his jaw crack though. It's right underneath it. So I want to give you some tips on casting and how you're going to present these lures that are just going to give you a lot more chance of getting a jack to bite. Increase your hookup rate as well but uh, there's just some real subtleties that make all the difference. So when you're approaching a snag, your stealth is obviously important, but the first cast that goes in there, that's really got to be your best shot at it. If you start casting around the periphery of the snag, 
the jacks can sort of lose a little bit of interest. You want to surprise them, get that element of surprise, and land it right in the zone on the first crack. So my first cast is usually on the back of some patience, like approaching the snag, depending on how easy it is to get to that pressure point or that really dark patch in beside the log. And uh, you don't want to hurry that first cast to get it in there. The first couple of casts are your best shot. So I usually will just take my time, position the boat, really stealthily just sit there and uh, wait until I can get that perfect shot at it first go. And the cast you're trying to get is as deep into the death zone as you can. Like you're trying to get right into the dark shadowed patch. If you've got a lay down with the base of a tree, you want it right in the back corner where the jacks are gonna be super confident that it's all theirs. Um, if you've got sort of overhanging stuff, you want to get far in underneath all that overhanging stuff as you can. If you've got like split timber, you want to get it deep in the V, as deep in there as you can get it. Um, the jacks will hold in that, in that hierarchical sense around a structure, so you want to hit that really good spot first. And then the idea is that you just give it enough time. You don't have to hurry it back. You just leave it in there with little stabby movements of the rod. Just leave it in there. If you've got a prop, get the prop fizzing hard. Get that back prop just fizzing really hard when you rip it. And that'll throw out enough vibe to stir them up. Now in the middle of summer, just the land can be enough. Like as soon as they hear it, that's it. They'll come in and have a look at it. So there's, there's something sitting under that now, a little boil out the back of it. So watching it, there it is again, boiling up. It's a little, ba a little baby jack. It's a hard thing to cop fishing this natural structure, which is just, I just get so much more disconnect I enjoy it a lot more the challenge of casting structure out here is a lot um, is a lot harder for mine whereas compared to fishing the canals you'll tend to get the, bit, the bigger jacks in the canals a lot of the times but the enjoyment of fishing stuff like this and working it out it's definitely the reason why I love to come out here in front of chasing those really big fish a lot of the time the challenge of getting them out from something like this is nuts too So you can see my aggressive rod tip action, I'm like, ah, and then just let it sit there. You let the rings push out, all the bubbles move away, and it just leaves that floating bait there for the jacks. You sort of saw my first approach cast was right into the base of that little drain as it came out, and that's the thing that got the interest straight away. So you don't really want to be throwing around the edges like you might for trevally. If you're fishing for trevs, you might sort of pick off the outside ones um, and, and you'll still get fish that way. You're not going to get hit with those casts that come off the edge basically all the time with a jack. It has to be on top of it. You can hear that, that really proppy sound and when it dives down, the jacks love these things. A good prop bait should spin as you just cruise it through the water and that little little bit of flash as it just dawdles out of the strike zone, that can be enough to set them off as well. So I'll just talk you through the things that I'm looking for on the bank now. Like you've got a great spot here, there's a little drain, there's overhanging timber, there's heaps of stuff in this zone that just really screams jack for me. And um, doesn't mean that it's game on and you're definitely going to get them, but this is where you need to sort of look to find those better, better structures to be a shot at it. And the more you pay attention to the little subtleties on the bank, uh, the better your chances are going to be. It's not always the things that you can see above the water that are really obvious. Sometimes it takes you slowing down, chilling out, and then picking up on some of the bigger things. You know, it could even be like birds fly overhead and the shadow catches a corner and you can see bait all spook and you know that's where the bait's sitting then. 
so your approach is a little bit more stealthy as you get to that corner. It could be things like, um, you know, if you've got an old overhanging tree, there's probably going to be twigs sitting underneath that. That's enough for a jack or a bank that's broken. You know, if you're fishing on the edges of farmlands, often up the backs of systems, um, all the cattle come down and stomp around in the mud and they might have a drink and they break up all the mud and expose some of the timber as well. And that's perfect for a jack when it's covered. So I'm constantly looking up on the bank as well and trying to work out what the history of the bank's been. Um, and it might have been, you know, during flood times, there's like a cutout section and a tree's fallen in and then decayed away and broken up and that's enough. Um, or it might be where flooded, flooded timber that's come down the system has pushed into a bank or into a little back eddy pool and that's where they're going to be sitting as well. So I'm sort of slowing down my approach while I'm present, presenting some of this stuff to you and going through some of these ideas. But when I come out here, it's really intense sort of like picking apart what I'm doing and I'm trying to hit absolutely everything that makes sense. And that's it, like most cast wins kind of thing in the right spot. Got Nick, I saw that there, he's playing with it. Come on. Come on. Real little jacks, eh? They're just, uh, they're super aggressive, they're awesome to watch, and you can learn a lot just from, you know, picking up on some of their behaviours, the way that they come out and scope a bait, how long you should leave it there, even for the little ones. Um, it can teach you a lot about your retrieve. confidence you're in the right sort of spots too. It's just a matter of time until you pick up a better fish. And something like this you, you probably want to have skip casting gear in if you're skip casting because then you can you can really send it deep into it and get, get the jack stirred up. That's one of the one of the frustrations of fishing a, a you know like a hard bodied lure around that sort of brushy cover is you're gonna catch it a lot of the time trying to get him too close and fishing out off the edges, it's not really going to get it done. So, I've always got another skip casting set up just sitting there for structures just like that. As soon as you sort of hit a stick and start to rip it apart and pull on the tree, that's it's usually all over then. All the jacks sort of take off, head out into the deeper water for a bit, have a salt. Oh, I dropped it. Exposed timber, mid water. Oh, I saw the copper gold and the red in it. Oh, it's so frustrating. I don't know if you can see it. There's a, there is a log right here. I'll see if I can poke you around to have a look. Just exposed timber out in the mid water. Of course, there's going to be something hanging on that. Oh. Oh, my heart's sitting up in my neck. That's the best. That's the best. It's getting on too. Just later in the later in the session, I was like, oh, I should wrap the video up and start skipping skipping cast and dropping my presentation down as you might as the sun gets high, but the clouds come over. I was like, no, they're probably going to come out and be a little bit more aggressive, less likely to just sort of sit under their snag and sulk now the sun's right up. You only get one or two shots in, a, in an average session, you know. And so often there's donuts doing this stuff. That might have been my shot. It was a legal fish. <sighs> no, there's so much that goes into this, getting it right and then you pull hooks on them, it's so devastating. The 
thing I love about prop baits on structure is that they call them up. Like that fizzing noise is just, it just smashes them in. They have to come up and have a look at it. So, and you can leave it in there. Whereas in really slow, calm conditions like this, you've still got to burn a plastic straight back out so it can't stay in there. Which I love a plastic when there's a bit of tidal flow or something like that, or just heavy cover that you can only get into with it. But when it's dead calm like this, quiet, overcast, and the jacks are sort of out looking about, I love to be able to just sit something in there for them to come over and have a look at. Oh, big jack. There's a big jack. Come on. That was a one, mate. That was a beast. It's last cast of the morning. And I was like, is it too shallow? I was like, oh, it's only probably 40 centimetres deep in there. That was a big one. Oh, that kills me. Boy, he's a big fish. saw that big, big copper flank come up and shine at me. Just enough to scare the hell out of me. Oh, I've just been along a run of heavy, heavy timber. There's the first lay down, it's only tiny. And I was like, oh no, it's got nothing on all the others. Sure enough, there's the big jack sitting right there, ready to go. skip this um, skitter prop too underneath stuff it's got that really slender profile like a like a bait it's just like a mullet so you can pop it and it just gets gets a hop going on so you can get it underneath cover guys that's gonna have to do it this time um, didn't get it done I went very close had a couple of hits some small hits and then big one there but um, that is the skitter prop by Rapala these are a beautiful lure and um, mate, I want to get a bit more action on this just to show you how effective these things can be. If you haven't seen the Jack Guide, my downloadable video on Mangrove Jack, there is a good 20-25 minutes fishing with prop baits, chasing jacks and just getting hammered. So if you're after Mangrove Jack action you haven't seen that, make sure you get your hands on that. And um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave a comment in the section below if you've got a prop bait that you'd like to see reviewed on my channel and uh, I'll get onto it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.